Super Mario Sunshine isn't exactly known for always being a positive experience. Sure, the game is bright and chipper and feels like a summer dream, but that dream can sometimes turn to a nightmare really fast. There are certain areas in the game that just feel downright cursed. Whether the difficulty curve just randomly spikes, or unusual mechanics cause players to die over and over again. In one such place that strikes fear in the heart of players is the Pachinko Machine. But just what is going on behind the scenes to make this level such a burden to players? And how can we make the experience worse than it already is? Yes, you heard me right. We'll be creating a true Pachinko nightmare in this video. I hope you enjoy. The Pachinko Machine in Super Mario Sunshine often leaves players with nightmares, lying awake at night questioning their existence as a whole. Unless you're like me, and you're indulging in a nice supportive bed. Today's sponsor Helix sent me out a bed set about 9 months ago, and it truly has been a game changer. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to meet your sleep needs. I've been using their Dusk Lux mattress for almost a year now, which is a soft mattress with some firmness. It's been absolutely great for maximizing the amount of hours I sleep at night. I took their sleep quiz online to figure out the best kind of mattress for me since I sleep on my back, and the results were pretty spot on. They then shipped out everything to my front door for free. And and I was pretty shocked to see how everything just fits together with ease. No tools needed. And of course, the mattress is amazingly comfortable. If you're nervous about buying a mattress you didn't get to try in a store, they have this 100 day sleep trial to cover your butt. Basically, you have three months to make sure you love the mattress you bought. And if you don't, they'll pick it up and give you a full refund. Plus, Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty, and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. Since getting my Helix, I've honestly been sleeping really great, and I no longer shuffle around at night like I used to. It's been amazing. So if you're looking to upgrade your bed and get some quality rest, check out Helix by clicking my link in the description below. Go to helixsleep.com slash swankybox and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress. And a huge thanks to Helix for sponsoring today's video and supporting both my sleep and my channel. Okay. It's pachinko time! Now, when it comes to hard levels in Super Mario Sunshine, my memory has always gone towards that lily pad level and not the pachinko machine. Maybe I just got lucky on the pachinko, but I remember dying over and over on the lily pad stage and the frustration of having to make my way back over there on the boats was rage inducing. But watching players get destroyed by the pachinko machine made me realize that maybe I was just lucky when I took it on as a kid. So let's break down why this thing sucks. So, the Pachinko Challenge in Super Mario Sunshine essentially has you navigate this giant machine in search of 5 red coins spread across the different slots. Now, that concept may visually seem easy, since you can hover around with Flood. However, the problem with this machine is the environmental influence. It's what you can't see that makes this challenge very unreliable, unless you grind it out again and again. So within this machine, you really can only move left and right, as you're pinned against the back of the machine with a glass wall in front of you. But there's a universal effect that makes moving difficult. So the launcher on the left side of the machine essentially pushes Mario up quickly and to the center of the machine. But it has a really broken side effect unfortunately. No matter what, the launcher will want to finish its launch. That means it will give Mario a directional pull to the right at all times, until he reaches the center of the stage. The middle of this machine, above the area where the shine sprite spawns, is basically basically the end of the movement path for the launcher. However, Mario can technically stop before then. If Mario lands on the ground, the effects of the force that pushes Mario to the right stops affecting him. But if a player doesn't know this, they'll be completely thrown off guard when they get airborne and their character shoots off to the right. This loss of control usually means death, because a player freaks out and doesn't know what to do. I mean, you can see how broken it is by landing early on one of the pins and trying to walk off the left side. It's impossible because once Mario leaves the ground by falling to the left, the game pushes him back to the right and back onto the pin. And thus we have an effect like this. The only way to get rid of this, other than temporarily saving yourself with a ground pound in certain circumstances, is to reach the middle of the machine. Once you do, movement is restored. You can see the effect of this pull really easily by just standing on top of the machine. The entire upper part of the machine is marked as a slope you cannot stand on, despite being flat. So Mario will enter a sliding animation as soon as he touches it. You can't move at all except for diving again. If you're on the far right side, you'll see Mario just sits there. But if we try doing this on the left, the rightward momentum will kick in and it'll push us to the middle. It's very bizarre. Now, this right moving force isn't only triggered by using the launch pad. If you wall kick up the machine without using it, the launch force isn't as forcefully applied, but it still does exist. Wall kicking makes it a bit easier to get the coins on the left side of the machine. One other interesting tidbit is that you can actually just grab the bottom right coin by utilizing Flood. You continually run up the ramp on the back of the machine, and then use the hover nozzle to grab it. 
But now that we've covered the basics of the machine, why don't we try making it more difficult? Now, I know that sounds odd, but it wouldn't be a swanky box video if we didn't push something to the extreme, right? And besides, this level gives you three red coins for free. I always felt that was strange and it's far too simple. So let's add the red coins into the machine. One on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. And then we'll toss in some wind spirits. These guys will be a royal pain in the butt because once they spawn, they circle around Mario and wait to lunge out at him. This will make it so he can't stall as much inside the pachinko machine. I tried adding some winged strolling stews and assigning them on paths to go left and right. But for some reason, they all just, uh, fell to their death. I guess the pachinko machine does have that effect on people. With the coins now spread out and some wind spirits in place, it's time to tackle this dumb thing. Going into this challenge, I end up grabbing the top coin first because of the super powerful momentum. After that, I decide to fudge the bottom coin. Although, I'll be honest, the wind spirit is giving me a run for my money. He doesn't want me to take this coin. Eventually, I dodge the spirit though and take the coin from my collection. Two coins down and back in the gauntlet, I find myself pinned between two spirits in the center of the level. I really want to go for the coin off to the left. In theory, the idea is that we need to hover nozzle backwards to it and then dive into the slot below. But I get stuck in a dumb pin and fall to my death. <sighs> Back inside, I land in the center again only to get slaughtered by wind spirits. Luckily, I fell down to the pocket and my life was saved. But on my next trip up, I landed on a pin before the center. So I know the momentum is going to screw me over. I want to see if I can use this momentum to go for the far right coin that isn't in a pocket. But the game has other plans, as another pin causes me to get stuck. I stick the landing though, and at least get a red coin. Back up on the same pin, the same dumb thing happens, but I salvage it with a dive for the center coin. Honestly, one of my biggest fears is running out of water by trying to do repeated runs for the side coins, assuming I don't die. I'm having trouble making further progress though, and I get slaughtered by wind spears again. I know I need to land on some far right pins, so I try my best and manage to stick one. The red coin is below me on the side of the machine, and I know I'll need to jump down backwards so I can activate the hover nozzle to guide me into the pocket. So that's what I do, and I manage to make it work out. We're four coins in now, and I'm starting to feel the pressure. The coins on the left side of the stage are going to be a huge gamble because of the mysterious pushing force. I make it into the center again, but I end up getting slaughtered by the wind spirits, forcing me into my fifth red coin. Not what I wanted to happen, but I'll take it. Going up again, the same thing happens and I fall inside again. But this is where I want to point out that there is a mechanic you can use to climb out of the center pits if you like. You can wall kick between the glass and the back of the machine to make it back up to the pins. I do this to give myself another chance. I move from one pin to another and then try to go for the coin, but I mess up. So I land on a pin down below. From here, I know I can do a somersault flip to get the coin and use Flood to guide me back to the pocket. And now, the only two coins that remain are the top two. Mind you, these side coins were probably the most brutal of the bunch, but the pressure is on and I do not want to mess this up. I got knocked into the center again, but this time I'm going to muscle my way up to the next coin. I wall kick back and forth to almost reach the pocket, but I get sniped in the air. And I seriously thought my run was over. Somehow, a pin catches me, and I realize this is actually more helpful. I get to the back of the pin, and wall kick back and forth straight up to the pocket with the coin. Honestly, I thought this was super dope, and I'm happy I could pull it off. One coin remains, only one more. And by far, this is the worst coin in my opinion. It's completely shielded by the invisible momentum. And I keep trying over and over to get to this dumb coin, but the game isn't having it. I fall into the purple pockets more times than I like to admit. Even when I'm right above this dumb thing, the momentum keeps me from reaching it. I take a leap of faith after getting frustrated and I attempt to snipe it with a ground pound, which sticks me on the pin above it. The momentum just throws me like a ragdoll and I get the coin. The star is spawned and I auto pilot to the center to get my prize. And the machine is cleared. Man, that's enough sunshine for one day. I hope you learned something new in this video and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.